Hi everyone, I'm Nick Olivo, and today we're looking at how to set up multi-sided tokens in Roll20. Before we dive in, I'd just like to thank Roll20 for sponsoring this video. As we all know, tokens are used to represent characters, creatures, and sometimes objects on our VTT. But sometimes a character or monster might need more than one piece of artwork. In D&D, a werewolf needs a humanoid and a beast form. In Call of Cthulhu, a lizard person may have consumed a human and is using their likeness. And in Marvel, a scroll can look like anyone it wants. So multi-sided tokens let us set up multiple pieces of art for a given creature and then switch between them when it's dramatically appropriate. And so in this video, I'll show you how to set up a multi-sided token and link it to a character sheet, and for those of you who have pro accounts, I'll show you a one-line macro that makes the process go really fast. Let's dive in. So the first thing we want to do is drag whatever monster we want to work with out onto the battlefield. I've already dragged this night hag out. I'm also going to grab a werewolf and just drag him out onto the battlefield. There we go. So we've got our monsters, and as you can see right now, if I right-click on these tokens, they are not multi-sided tokens. But I want to make them multi-sided tokens. So the first thing I need is the other images I want for the multi-sided token. And so I'll get alternate forms for the hag, because the hag can look like a regular humanoid. And then our werewolf, of course, can transform between being a humanoid and a werewolf, so we want that. So what I'm going to do is go over to my art library, and I actually have this token pack, which comes from Grim Press. Uh, I don't have any kind of a relationship with Grim Press. I just think these are really cool tokens. And so I want to use some of these images as the alternate forms for my hag and werewolf. So for my hag, what I'm going to do is grab this villager elf lass. I really like this one. I'm going to drag that out onto the battlefield. There we go. And then for my werewolf, I'm going to grab this villager commoner stalwart and bring it out onto the battlefield. So like I said earlier, there's two ways we can do this. One way is available to everybody, no matter what type of Roll20 account you have. And the other way is only available to pro subscribers. So we're going to look at the way that's available to everyone first. So the first thing we're going to do is actually get the image from the hags token right now. And the way we do that is by clicking on the hags token pressing Z on the keyboard, and that brings up this zoomed view. So what I'm going to do is right click on this zoomed image and say save image as. And I'm going to save this onto my computer. So it popped up over here. I'm going to save this and I'm going to call this night hag token. Save that. And then I'm going to do the same thing for the image I want her to turn into. So Z again, right click, save image as, and then I'm going to call this the hag alt form dot jpeg and save that. Okay, so I've got those two images now on my computer. That's step one. Step two then is to go up to our art library and we're going to go into my library and we're going to upload and we're going to choose the files that we just downloaded. So I'm going to say choose a file and I'm going to choose the hag alt form. Open that. There we go. So now that's been added into my library and then we'll do the same thing again for the actual hag token itself. And there we go. We now have the night hag token and the hag alt form. Okay, so we've got these images locally now. The next step is to go to the collections tab in Roll20. And we're going to scroll down to the rollable tables section here. I'm going to click add, and that's going to put a new rollable table all the way down at the bottom of the list, like so. So rollable tables turn into multi-sided tokens. So that's why we're creating a rollable table right now. And so we're going to click on this. We're going to rename it hag token. And we're going to say add item. And when we add the item, what we're going to do is drag on the tokens that we've just uploaded here. So there's our hag form, save changes, add another one, and then our hag alt form, drag that on, save that. Now, if we wanted to, we could put in more, like if we wanted to have multiple faces for this hag, you know, she goes from being the cute young girl to the 
sweet old lady to the horrific hag form. We could have as many of these in here as we want. I'm just keeping it to two for simplicity's sake. So now we've got our tokens set up inside the table here. We're going to click Save Changes. And now let's go back to our Collections tab. And what we're going to do is click on Token for Hag Token. And that puts this new token onto the battlefield here. And when we right click on it, we see that it is multi-sided and we can choose between the hag form and the young girl form. Cool. But this token does not represent anything yet. This is just art. So what we're going to do is double click on the token and we're going to say that this represents character night hag. And then we need to set up our bars. So bar one will be our HP and that'll be 112. Bar two will be our NPC AC which is the NPC's armor class. And then if you want a third bar value, go for it, but I don't need that for what I'm doing right now, so I'm just gonna leave it as those two. And then we'll save settings. Okay, so now we have a token that is multi-sided. We can switch between the young girl form and the hag form. And when we alt double click on this token, it brings up the night hags character sheet. Great. Now, the only other thing to mention here is this is only changed for this specific instance of the Night Hag. If I come back into my journal and drag out another Night Hag token, you'll see that this Night Hag is not multi-sided. So if we want every Night Hag in this game to always use this multi-sided token that we've just created, then what we need to do is double click on the token and say update default token. And when we do that, now, when we bring out another Night Hag from our game, you see that it's multi-sided. Now, the thing to know here, though, is this only impacts Night Hags in this specific game. You're not altering anything in the compendium. But in this specific game that I'm running right now, in my journal, any new Night Hag that I draw out from the journal will have this multi-sided token. So now this next section will show you a faster way to create multi-sided tokens using mods, but this does require a pro account to do what I'm about to show you. So first thing you're going to need to do is install a mod in your game called Token Mod. So go into your game's settings page and in the mod library section here, just look for Token Mod in this dropdown. Token Mod comes to us from the arcane scriptomancer himself, the Aaron. It is a veritable Swiss army knife of capabilities that allows you to manipulate pretty much every property around the tokens in your game. So get Token Mod installed in your game and then come back into the main game. And once we get the mod installed, we're going to start out sort of similar to what we did before. We're not going to grab the image of the werewolf. We don't need that, but we do need the image of the commoner. So we're going to Z this, right click, save image as. We're going to do just like we did before where we get a copy of the image locally and then we're going to upload that. And I'm, what I'm going to do is just drag it right back onto the battlefield from here. So now I've got this newly done commoner. Scale him down and I'm going to delete the original one. Now what I'm going to do is Z again and I'm going to right click and say copy image address. And... For this next part, let's bring up our trusty Notepad++ window here. I'm going to paste in the image address. So this is the URL to the image that we just copied. So let's scoot this over so we can see everybody here. So what we're going to do is use token mod to add this image to our werewolf's image. And then we're going to do that is with code that looks like this. Exclamation point token mod says to roll 20 that we're using token mod. Dash dash set. IMG source means we are setting the image source property of the token. And the really important thing here is this pipe and plus. What this says is we are adding an image to the existing list of images for this particular token. Without this plus sign, what it will do is turn the werewolf's token into this commoner, but it wouldn't be multi-sided. So the plus sign is what's going to allow us to make this into a multi-sided token. So now we're going to take this that we just copied here. I'm going to cut that and put it at the end. So this is what the command will look like. So let's stretch this out. You can see this is all on one line. Just it wraps. All right. 
And again, just to prove there's nothing up my sleeve, this is not a multi-sided token right now. So now I'm going to copy this and let's go into our chat. I've got the werewolf token highlighted. We'll paste in this command. And there we go. Now we have a multi-sided token and we can switch between the werewolf or the commoner. I don't need to create a rollable table. I don't need to reassign the bar values. I can just go through and I could run that command as many times as I wanted to append more images to it. To make this go even faster, what we can do is create a macro that looks like this, where we prompt the user to enter an image URL. So what we can do here is grab this, come over to our collections again, let's make a macro, and I'm gonna call this macro the multi-token image, and we'll paste in that command, and we'll scoot this guy down a little bit, and let's save the changes here, and we'll find multi-token image in here, and I will add that to the bar. All right, and so now, here it is, multi-token image. So if I bring out another werewolf, all right, so this one is not multi-sided. So let's Z our commoner again, copy the image address, click on the werewolf, run the macro, paste in that URL, submit, and there we go, now it's multi-sided, and we have our commoner werewolf ready to go. Just like before, this does not impact every werewolf in your game and doesn't impact the compendium. So again, if I drag out a fresh one, like so, obviously that is not multi-sided. So what I can do, again, is double click on the token, say update default token, save settings, and now bring out another werewolf, and there we go, we can see that it is multi-sided. Now, some of you may be wondering if it's possible for token mod to set the default token. And token mod certainly has the capability to do that. However, it wouldn't work with the way I've done this. You see, in order for API scripts to interact with images, those images need to be loaded into your local art library like we did earlier when we downloaded and uploaded the images. And then you'd need to create the werewolf token as a rollable table like we did with the hag, link it back to the character sheet, and at that point you've done enough manual work that automating that one step with token mod doesn't really gain you anything. So there you have it, setting up multi-sided tokens in Roll20. I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give it a like and consider subscribing. And until next time folks, have a great day.